welcome to the seventh lecture in the second IHF live online symposium. My name is Courtney Gayen and I'm your moderator for today's lecture. For those of you joining us for the first time, I will briefly outline the translation options we have available, which you can see on your screen right now. We have French, Spanish and Arabic available for this lecture to those joining us on Zoom only. If you're watching this on Facebook right now, we are going to share the link to this Zoom webinar in the comments so you can join us here if you would like to use the translation function. This second IHF live online symposium is part of the Virtual Academy, which has been in operation for roughly one year in order to facilitate global online learning and licensing. All of this is part of the IHF Education Center, which you can find at ihfeducation.ihf.info. This second IHF live online symposium is focused on development trends of the game, consequences on training methods for coaches and tactical training for referees, and includes a total of nine live lectures presented by top handball experts from around the world. Today's lecture is from IHF Commission of Coaching and Methods member and goalkeeper coach at the Norwegian Handball Federation, Mats Olsen. And the topic is tendencies in goalkeeping, tactical behavior in breakthrough situations. This lecture is being recorded, so you will be able to access it later for on-demand viewing. We do not send the presentation, but you can watch it as many times as you like in the IHF Education Center. And do feel free to ask questions throughout. We will have a question and answer section at the end of this lecture. So please send, send your questions away. So Mats, welcome. So thank you very much for the introduction, Courtney. Uh, so I should try to share my screen here and it should go right there. I think. Uh, and we should go up right like that. No, that was thank you for listening. That's a little bit too quick, no? <laughs> so uh, welcome everybody all around the world to this uh, particular uh, uh, meeting about goalkeeping and uh, I'm very proud to be here. I have this possibility to talk to you all over the world. Uh, I'm right now in France uh, with a Norwegian female team preparing for the Olympics. We are having a very good uh, concentration and we are working quite well uh, to prepare us for the Olympics. So we hope that we will be ready when we come in there. It's a long time left, but uh, we are doing a good job so far. So we should today talk about a little bit tendencies in the goalkeeping. Uh, like if we started to look a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, about the agenda today, I will make a small introduction. Uh, we will take a little, little bit look about examples and uh, how we can respond to these resp uh, examples and a small conclusion and thanks and questions for the, uh, finally. No? So this is the agenda, what we are doing today, how we will work together. And as Courtney said, uh, if you have any questions, maybe it's better for everybody that we wait until the final and make the questions, because it could be that you have a question and the, the answer to that question will, will come in the next chapter or something like that. No, But don't forget it. I will be able here and be uh, to work with you and answer the question. I have uh, saved time for that also. We will not be here for 90 minutes just listening to me. We, there will be time enough to make the questions afterwards also. So just make a small note and remember your question and we, we make it afterwards. Okay, let's go. Uh, so the introduction is uh, boring, uh, talking a little about uh, text from the Egypt, but I will make it easier for you. I will take away something and just keep it with the, with the most important part. No? Uh, the new challenges for the goalkeepers, like I call it the wide angles and the breakthroughs. So if you just look in Egypt 2021 and the World Championships, we saw that 27% of the shots came from nine meters range. In 2015, this was 32%. So we can see in six years, we have less distance shots. And the most important of all, we can see that we have 14% of all shots were coming from breakthroughs. While in 2019, it was 10. And in 2017, it was 6% of it. So you have 
from 2017 until today, in uh, four years, we have doubled the shot from breakthroughs, from six to 14% of all the shots. And I'm not quite sure that we coaches and especially the goalkeepers, coaches all over the world have taken notice of it. We, a lot of us, we continue the same working as always, uh, business as usual, and uh, preparing the, the goalkeepers a lot of times for long distance, long range shooting. But uh, in this case, we have to be prepared for the new devel development of handball. So we can see clearly see this in the official statistics, no? So like I said, uh, when, when one situation and breakthrough is something that is coming. Uh, and we have another uh, uh, type of um, challenge also. Uh, the wide angles. Uh, the wide angles is because why do we have this? What is happening with the game? The game is, in my way of thinking, uh, getting more and more attractive. We have a game that is not uh, so physical anymore, like it was for maybe 10 years ago. Uh, we have, like I think, more proactive defense. Uh, we have defenders, uh, defense and defenders that goes for the ball, especially from the wing position and the second position positions in the in the defending systems. No, that you want to try to catch the ball, uh, snap the ball from the uh, attackers. Try to be more active in uh, for ten years or in more back or five years. The defenders, the first defenders, for a lot of time uh, close to the line. Yes, to make try to make small angles for the shooters from the wings, but today they are more active, and that in in one way it's getting more possibility for the defenders to catch the ball, to win the ball, and there's no shooting at all. But the, the the second and the, the the bad thing about it, it a lot of times we have some wide angles, like I call it super angles, that will come against the goalkeepers, and that is one thing that we have to be prepared. We have to prepare the goalkeepers for that. That is one thing that I'm working with my goalkeepers here right now in in France. Um, I expect when we go into the Olympics that we will have some uh, wing shot from the wide angles. So my goalkeepers, uh, they have to be prepared for that. Uh, we can't just make them uh, train like always, but we have to prepare what is the real game that we are supposed to be playing against. So um, that's very important. So one other thing that, uh, why is this happening? Uh, for, like I said, more proactive defense, they are going for the ball. We have even, even better physical preparation for of the players. Uh, today, the, the methodology of the physical preparation of the, the players, handball players, in, uh, goalkeepers, wing players, all the players are generally better prepared today than for 10 years ago. And this is an evolution that is happening and we can also see it, especially on the wing players, uh, both the men's and women's, Handball, we can see this, that the, the wing players are getting, uh, they can jump higher, they can jump uh, with more time in the air, get more time to look at the goalkeeper, and they are stronger in the body. Not, like I said, physically stronger in the biceps, the legs, no, no, but the, the, the core, the core of the body that makes them possibility to shoot in the short angle, long angle, wait a long time. So the physical preparation of the players Every time it's getting a little bit better, and uh, that makes it even also more complicated for the players, uh, for the goalkeepers. Even better technical skills on the players. Uh, this is one of the big challenges for the goalkeepers. Uh, like I said before, maybe there was uh, some players that was before uh, ahead of the rest of the, the players with the new development, new techniques that we goalkeepers has to um, prepare ourselves. But we knew that when I go to play against this player or with this player, this will happen. This is some possibilities that is very technical skills. But today, uh, almost everybody that is playing in the world championships or the top level in the high league and the, whatever, they have these technical skills. And uh, if you don't have it, you try to catch it because uh, we can see a lot of handball worldwide like you are listening to this um, uh, 
conference today. Uh, the world has been, uh, has been, is getting smaller and smaller every day in this kind of uh, internet connection by YouTube and everything we can learn. So the players, the younger players are looking a lot about what the, the best one is doing and they try to copy them. And that will be mm, the normal evolution. So the technical skills of the players is getting better and better. Uh, what is happening is also um, why do we have even better individual tactical level on the field players? Uh, we have less easy shots. No, we uh, it's not in any times that you as a player uh, take a decision to make a shot. If it's not a really good position, then you play back, and we have a speed handball, and we have everything. So that's is also making it's more complicated for the goalkeepers. We don't have it's. Um, not so often now, the, the shots from the small angles or the, the, the breakthroughs uh, between the first and second defenders, for example, with a, with a good defender uh, trying to get in the angle smaller for the shooter. No? So that is also one thing that is happening. And the last but not the least, the development of the interpre interpretation of the rules that gives the advantage of the, for the attack. No? So it's one thing that I think it's mm, one of the most important things that it's happening in handball for the last years, mm, what I'm saying here, everything from proactive defense. Why do we have more proactive defense today? Yes, we have it because of the development of the interpretation of the rules. Um, I think it's a good idea. I like this. Um, the handball is less physical in, uh, in, uh, in uh, tackling today than it was for a couple of years ago. We are getting more speed and more clean situations, and that's getting handball more attractive. Uh, so this interpretation of the rules that when you can see at this picture, for example, this uh, defender here is taking away his arms and taking stepping backwards and letting the Danish player come, come through to shoot. Uh, for a couple of years ago, this defender who is here in the middle, he had been attacking the, this attacker with a tackle. And that was making life easier for the, for the goalkeeper because this shooter has to be uh, more concentrated on the defender and not on the goalkeeper. Today, he knows that he will not come to me, because if he's coming to me in this situation, it will be at least two minutes and seven meters. And if he's touching me very bad, then it could be even a red card. So this is a typical situation today. If uh, That's why I choose this uh, photo, to show this defender's situation in the development of the interpretation of the rules, gives the advantage to the attacker. And if we also tell them that they have better physical preparation of the players, technical skills are better, and the tactical level of the field players is getting better for every generation or for every, uh, every year. That's making life more and more complicated for us in the, as the goalkeepers and the goalkeeper coaches. So we have to be aware of this, what is real life today and what will real life be in the short future. In my, in my personal case right now, my, uh, my thought is what will happen in August, uh, end of July and beginning of August. What, are the, what way do I have to prepare my goalkeepers? And at the same time, I'm also thinking about uh, for the next championships and for the younger generation, the, the players that is not really here right now in the national team, but they are playing maybe within a junior team or they're playing in the B uh, national team or the top level in the clubs, that they are ready to, to uh, see the development and prepare them for the future. So this is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the big things for me to, to uh, learn about the handball, what will happen, to try to look into the crystal ball uh, about the future. No? So I will give you now some kind of examples from this, what we are talking about, so that everybody around the world uh, can see, not only listen to me. And 
uh, we should start with the shots from the wide angles with wing specialists. Um, the tendency that we see by observing the matches and that is not seen in the statistic is that we have more shots from wings or from wing position for more open angles. Often the number of uh, number one defenders need to help the number two defender and leave a good opportunity to the wing players to catch a big angle for shooting when they finally receive the ball. This is, like I said, when I'm looking for the statistics after a tournament, generally you can read a lot of what kind of shots is coming, distance shots, breakthroughs, wing shots. And like I show you, showed you in the beginning, we can see the tendency from uh, long distance to breakthroughs and so on. The wing shots is more or less, less the similar. Uh, when we are talking about uh, how many shots, but in these statistics, we can't see if they're jumping from half meters angles, one meters angles, two meters angles, or three meters angles. And my, what I have to say today, experienced I can see that these angles is getting be uh, bigger and bigger. That's why I want to show you some of these examples. So let's see if this video, I will take away the sound here somewhere. Let's see, I should take away this one there. So, so I can take out the sound. Here we can see a couple of examples. Some of them are from the uh, World Championships. This is from the game between uh, Spain and Norway. Uh, in the beginning of the, uh, no, it's from the quarterfinal. And here we have from France, Hungary. It's from different games. We can say they are playing, they are playing six against six. We look at this defense, the Hungarian defense, how they are playing with, with, uh, with the defenders, trying to snap the ball. This is what I'm meaning, that we have open uh, defenders, we have more uh, ball-orientated uh, defenders. This number one here is trying to snap the ball, and now the good attacker is passing the ball to the wing player. And we have a very big angle and a very good save. You can see also see here from the game between Denmark and uh, Egypt, we are playing six against six. Sometimes the angles that we can see in these cases are like they are, like if it's superior, superiority, that you're playing six against five, no? But we are playing six against six, and this is another case that we can see how the Danish attacker is opening up the, the, the Egyptian defense. And we can see, we take it once again here, what is happening when the defender wants, the first defender here is playing one against two, and he wants to come and try to snatch the ball here, but the, 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 to Mikkel Hansen, he tried to play here and he's leaving his opponent. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at this angle, bing, 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 bing. It's very big and it's a very big possibility and a great save. It's a great save uh, in this case. We can see the Danish team is moving around the ball. And once again, oh, sorry about that one. I, it's a little bit sometimes when you want to do this, the ball is jumping and fall back. We make this one once again, and then we come back to the, the, the other one. I should try to put this one somewhere so I can stop it. Here I have it. Once again, the defender is getting up and leaving a big angle. And this time it was no possibility for the goalkeepers to make a save. On the other side, it's not only a couple of teams that do this, all the teams. We see here Egypt doing the same against Denmark. Open it up and the Danish defender has to help his second defender and open up the big angle for the shooter. And as you can see on this uh, video, it's a good video because you can see the physical preparation of the Egyptian player is hanging a long time in, in the air. Even if the Danish goalkeeper, Niklas Landin, is good positioned, 
he has not good enough uh, or uh, good enough possibility to make the save because the, uh, the shooter from Egypt is having a good physical preparation, technical skills, and also been playing and a high individual tactical level because they're just waiting for this position to have this open angle. Uh, some videos. Uh, I have the, the great opportunity or I have the possibility, I'm very lucky man in the, in the handball world, to play, to have the possibility to work with both the men's and women's handball. No? So that's why I'm uh, very happy also to give you some videos. Maybe some of you haven't seen them yet. It's from the last final four in Budapest for three weeks ago when the Norwegian team Vipers won. Uh, some of the players we can see in these videos are working with us in the national team. But it's, it doesn't matter if we see men's handball, women's handball, uh, whatever. The angles and the way of playing the defense and the preparation of the attackers, it's very similar. It's the same. It's no difference. So we can see some shots from this uh, championship, Final Four, that we played in Budapest for three weeks ago. We have uh, the Hungarian team, Goyl, playing in defense against Brest from France. And as you can see, they find big angles. No one is shooting from small angles. Everything is from good angles or, like in this case, maybe it was not so super angle, but the angle is big enough to make a good sh a shot for this and no defender is uh, trying to defend it to, uh, to make a small angle for her. This is a big angle and very difficult for the goalkeeper and with a long arm on the long side. It will be even worse later on. You can see, we will see that. Here is coming one counter-attack. And the situation, if you look here at the... Uh, Mazon, the goalkeeper of uh, uh, Moscow, who is playing here. This is a very different, uh, difficult situation because it's not the player that is coming straight to you. If it, it's easier, if you're a goalkeeper and the player attacker is jumping towards you, but in this case, the wing player is jumping from the corner and having a direction inside to go to a bigger angle and that makes the goalkeeper in a position that is very complicated because in the same time that uh, you have to be right position in this moment you have to follow her you can't just be waiting in one position you have to follow her and be in the right position in the moment of the shot and that's one of the big problems when you're uh, reaching uh, shooters from angles that is jumping inwards and you have as a goalkeeper tried to find the right position. We go further on, some more videos. Go here against uh, Moscow, we continue with that game. Uh, Anita Gorbic. Vipers defending, as we said before, what is happening. We have defenders that want to catch the ball. The wing players want to catch the ball and leaves the possibility for a big angle. And makes the life quite difficult for Katrine Lunde in the goal. We are working on that now, right now, for the Olympics. Same, Vipers doing the same against the Brest. continue to see something more of these uh, open angles. This is a typical six against five situation that is normal that you get in big angles. But it's a situation that we have, as we can see, a six against six. This is a very good example also of what is happening. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six defenders, six against six, good play from Brest and good technical individual skills. The defender here tried to help, 
the second defender, the second defender is, is helping the third defender. And everything is going here out there to finally we have a very big angle for the for the wing shooting. And uh, Katrina is trying to make some different tactic move in that uh, in that situation. It's not the same shot. It's the, almost the same situation, but there it was another kind. Here we can see from. Uh, the championship, Champions League men's, and it's uh, Paris against Kiel. And uh, why do I choose this one? I have uh, received this uh, video from my friend Matthias Andersson, who is also working in Kiel, uh, to show me a little bit what happened in this game. Look at the angles. It's not easy to be Niklas Landin to stand in this position with a shooter who is jumping and very good physical, technical skills and go in for the big angle. Very complicated situation for the goalkeepers, even if you are uh, Niklas Landin. If you look at this last one, once again, we can see when the shooter is shooting from the wing position, he's almost shooting from position that it's like you're coming between the second and third defender. He has been uh, jumping from the wing. And the last one. In this game, as uh, everybody knows, Paris Saint-Germain beat at the kill and uh, one of the, the things that would happen was quite this, this part of the game, no? where the, the wing players won that big angles that even if you're a lot of pure goalkeeper coaches and so on and the players, the best goalkeeper in the world, like uh, Niklas Landin, has been elected a couple of times. Even he has big problems to find the right position and uh, to save the balls. But, I will show you quite good examples on Niklas Landin further on how he is solving this problem also. Uh, we go for the next situa situation that I want to talk to you about is the, the breakthroughs. I just give you one because the, one of the biggest things for me to work right now is with the big super angles, like I call it. The super angles from the wings that is uh, getting worse and worse. Uh, the defender, the, 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 or the breakthrough between the second and the first defender is also there. Or like in this case, like I said, outside the first defender. Here's one example. With this open defense, you can see the Swedish players are running in to try to receive the ball and the defender has to go in and defend them. And what will happen is the back, back players is going to what should we call it? Breakthrough or wing shot? Hmm? I call it breakthrough. Even if it's outside the, the, the first defender, but in my world, this is the breakthrough because he's coming from the back for a position, not from the wing position. So this for me, in my work and my vocabulary is a breakthrough. No? And here we can see it. The same goalkeeper as before, Niklas Landin. He's showing you why he's named a lot of times the best goalkeeper in the world. Excellent save, excellent position for uh, for Albin Lagergen from the Swedish, and it's a good way of seeing that the physical preparation of the goalkeepers is also very important. Uh, we should talk about that. We have the uh, breakthroughs between the first and second defender by the backcourt players. That's what we always has had. It will, has always existed this possibility to make the breakthrough between the first and second, especially when we are one player more in attack. But, like I said, with the interpretation today of the rules, mm, the players like here, uh, Mikkel Hansen, who's coming between the first and second defender, as you can see, the Swedish defender mm, is just putting a hand on him. It's, it's not defending. And if he should be defending him, harder with his arms, it will be two minutes. What will this mean? This mean, if you look at the, the photo, you can see that uh, Mik uh, Mikkel Hansen is clearly concentrated on the goalkeeper. 
and can look at the goalkeeper. And he is having the advantage against the goalkeeper. And that is something that we have to be uh, realistic as a goalkeeper to know when we have this strategical play against the, the, the shooter, that we, we have to go into our own mindset. And this is the, the way we will have to uh, try to de defeat the attackers in the mind game. No? If we can be thinking what they are going to do, if we can cheat them, and uh, the position is even more important. We will talk about that a little bit further on. I'll show you one example of this also. It's uh, Denmark against Egypt. It will not be Mikkel Hansen. It will be another Danish player who is uh, getting a breakthrough here. Easily played by the Danish team against Egypt. And very good angle. No defender is getting there. And it's making the life quite complicated for the goalkeeper because the second and the first defender is giving him the possibility to come in and play this uh, and shoot the shot without any problems. How can we respond? What is the response to this from the goalkeepers? And uh, how can we work on this? get better and have uh, even uh, better statistics in the saves in these positions than we have today. Uh, that is why I put here right now three of the goalkeepers that are working here within uh, in uh, the concentration that we are having in the south of France. Very nice place here in Cap Breton. We are playing in a very nice place. I can recommend it for you to, to visit as a tourist or a training camp. Very good. So we are working here, and here we can see I'm working with Katarina Lunde, Silja Solberg, and Ricky Grondon. This is the three first goalkeepers I'm working with here. And what do we do? How are we working? How we do we respond to this? Yes, I want to first talk about uh, the OODA loop. What is the OODA loop? This is uh, something that an uh, American military servant uh, in my uh, discovered or invented uh, for, uh, I don't know, 30 years ago. And this is something that uh, we can use also for the goalkeepers uh, in the mental game, because this is not so easy to say. I will not give you one solution. How should we save the wing shot? How should we save the breakthroughs? Because that is quite individual. I will come to that. But this is not individual. This is something that you can all use when you talk to your goalkeepers. The OODA loop. Think about that. What is the first thing? You the first thing, they, we put it into the goalkeepers, uh, the methodology saving for saving, as I use normally when I talk about the goalkeeping. So I, I, I put these two things together so that we can see it in a big uh, manner. No? Because the first is like the OODA loop is saying, observe. And what do we do as a goalkeeper or goalkeeper coaches? We have to observe. We observe before the game and during the game, read the game. Before, I have to know if I should play against uh, today or in Sunday, we will play against France here. A uh, uh, friendly uh, game against France. What do we do with uh, my goalkeepers? What do we do here? Before that game, the day before, the night before, we will look at the uh, fronts. We will look at the players that we are expecting to come. We are looking how they are playing. And we, uh, we start observing 24 hours before the game, but they're studying videos, like 99% of all the goalkeepers. But we don't only study what is shooting. A lot of goalkeepers just study, ah, the ball is coming to the left, the goal ball is coming to the right. No. What you have to study in this situation to observe is to observe what is happening before the situation is coming. Can we help by doing something in the defense? Can, if we don't can have that, what is the situation? If the, the player is jumping outwards, is it jumping inwards? Is it jumping upwards? Or where is the reality or uh, uh, the possibility for the shooters to shoot? But if, because if you just take note where the ball is coming into the goal, it's not enough. 
And sometimes you also have to be thinking about when we're observing is, uh, guess who want to play? How is my uh, physical possibility as a goalkeeper? If I am two meters uh, like I am, 196, or let's see, uh, if my goalkeepers here is uh, playing with 175 uh, and we are studying a game where the French team is playing against the goalkeeper, this is uh, 160. Of course, they will maybe shoot in a different way against that goalkeeper than against my goalkeepers. No? So observe. And during the game is to observe for the goalkeeper. And for that, we need you know, handball knowledge to, to make this analyze. No? The second next, next step is the orient. And then it's when we're inside the game to read the defenders and attackers. And there we should talk about the game understanding. Not only knowledge, we have the game understanding. That's why I'm talking about this is not one way. You will not have a technical solution for me here how to work with the goalkeepers. No, what I have to put into you is the thinking. How can I work with my goalkeepers? And we have to try to develop this game understanding, like we see when a player is coming, if he's one, uh, jumping inwards for a bigger angle, outward for a smaller angle, what is the depth of the, the players, read the defenders and the attackers, and try to work with the strategies. What is a strategy for a goalkeeper? Uh, the strategy for a goalkeeper is, number one, the position. Where is my position? And where do I want to be in the moment of the player is going to shoot against me? Uh, for the next step in the UDALOP or in the methodology of, methodology of for saving is to take a decision. The body language and the movements of the attacker. And there I can see to take the decision, what kind of technique should I use? Because in the game understanding, I have to read the, 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 the attacker's movement and big movements. And now, when I come into the decision, I have to read the body language of the shooter because now he has been or she has been jumping and she's in the air. And I have to be there to look at the body language if she's going to shoot at the short corner, long corner. Where is my position? Should I use my legs? Should I use my arms? Should I use one arm? Should I use two arms? Should I use two legs? I have seen goalkeepers that in this situation sometimes make saves with two legs. Matthias Anderson made that sometimes, for example. And that is where we have to work and take the decision, what kind of technique should I know, use? All this is something that we have to train because when it's coming to the game, it should be natural. Because if I'm as a goalkeeper in this way, is standing and thinking about handball knowledge, the strategy, the technique, it's too slow. So this, all this has to, be, has to be prepared before. And that's what we are doing right now here in France, for example. And the last one is act. And that means needs that we have to focus and act. I will show another photo of this that is clearly describing what I'm thinking about. But this is what I want you to put in a little bit in, in your thinking, to observe, orient, decide, act. This is the way, and this is the loop. This is going round and round and round for the goalkeepers. Every same, every save is made by observe, orient, decide, act. New ball, observe, orient, decide, act. And the methodology is what I'm having behind of that. Analyze, game understanding, shoot understanding, and then focus on the arm and ball. Look at this picture. Nice picture of Katrina Lunde. When we play a game and we can see the player, the attacker is attacking and you can look at the eyes of the goalkeeper or Katrina and she's focused on the arm, on the body language of the shooter and on the ball. She tries to read all this. We can see now, if you look quite well on the photo, when she's lifting a little bit of the left leg because she can see she's giving her the, this part of the goal, the left part of the goal, she's giving her. And she wants her to shoot on this part, a strategy. And now she will use a technique. She may take in a decision to go up with the left leg, with the left arms, to go to hit uh, the ball when it's coming there. I'm quite sure, I don't remember exactly, now, but I'm quite sure that this ball was saved by Katrina because she is doing everything perfect here. From the focus, 
and to the action. Okay, we go further on. If we go in to look at this uh, one by one, read the game. Like I said, the goalkeepers must develop an even higher understanding of the game and develop the ability to read the situation for when there will be a breakthrough attempt, the sooner or the better. Through this, the goalkeeper will gain time and find the right position in relation to the angle to the shooter without stress. That's why it's so read the game. This is so important. We, uh, in, the, in the game, the goalkeeper in one against one situation against breakthroughs or wing players, that we can, we as a goalkeeper, we can win in two, two things. We can win time or we can win space. And if I can win time and space, I have a much better possibility to make a save. Because if I'm coming late into the situation, I'm running too much around, I don't have so much idea of what's going to happen, um, then I will be late. And the, the advantage for the shooter is much bigger. And for me, it's much more complicated. So this is very important. And here we can see uh, Mikael Agerfors from the Swedish national team getting ready for the shot in a, to the angle, to the shooter, without any stress. He has found his position, he's waiting for him, and if he's going to shoot, he is ready for it. So he has to read the game, observe, and uh, understand the game. The positioning is, like I said, to find the right position in the relation to the goalkeeper's physical conditions and intended tactical actions. Um, this, this is the position in the Orient. This is uh, the next step. We can read the game. We see that it's coming for, uh, for a breakthrough or, or, or a pass to the wing. And what is the right position? That's why I put it inside some asps, uh, right position. Maybe it's one position for Katrine Lunde. It's another position for me. It's another position for Celia Sulberg. And it's another position for another goalkeeper. That's it's why it's so important that not only copy, we have to be, like I see, the basic position must, of course, take into account the shooter's height and jumping direction. Because if you have to look at myself, I have to know myself. A lot of goalkeepers, they are not aware about their own uh, height or their, uh, their own possibility. So they just put themselves in a position that maybe is not uh, the perfect one for your own physical possibilities. But in, in that, you have also to know, have knowledge about the player you should play against. That's why, for example, here and in, in sometimes in the trainings, we have in the national team here with us, in, in uh, the Norwegian national team here in France, we have uh, some players that is uh, over 190, back players. And we have back players that is uh, maybe the most former, famous man, man once, it's Nora Mörk, Stine Breda Loftedal. They don't reach 170. So you have to be aware when you're standing in the goal, is it the, the, goal, the shooter who's coming? Is it the, the shooter that is over 190? Or is it Stine, Stine Bredal or Nora Merck, a shooter that is not reaching 170? You should not be in the same position. Even if you are the same person, if you just go to the same position, you're in, in one of the cases, you're in a bad position. You could be in a good position for the high shooter, but then you are in a bad position for the uh, lower shooter or the opposite. So this is to the basic position. It's not so easy to say. When you have a breakthrough between the first and second, you should be on this position. And we make a cross on the floor. No, that's not the truth. Because you have to be aware of what is happening with the shooter and the, the physical possibilities of this and the jumping direction. Position, uh, the position correction. I was talking about the, uh, the first, like I said, orient, the positioning. That's the most important thing. The second one is to correct this, the decision. When I take the decision, I have to correct my initial position to be in the right moment at the, at the, where the ball really is coming. Because like we saw in the beginning uh, of the videos, especially on the big angles, the, the shooters are jumping inwards. 
And if I stand from a uh, ground position where I started my, my, my position, then I will open up the big angle and they can shoot every ball they want into the big angle I, and I have no possibility to save it. Or the, the opposite. What happened to a lot of goalkeepers in Egypt, they, they put the, the basic position too much to the big angle. They were expecting the shooters to jump and they were to win the big angle and then they positioned to the big angle and they made it too, too early. So the, the shooters, they could see that the goalkeeper is standing in the, in the, in the long corner, like we said, in the second post, and they were just shooting easily to the first post. So this is, uh, the positioning is so important that you have a ground position, the first position, and then you have to uh, correction. If you have to go to the right, to the left, if I could make a smaller opening to the small angle, or I should make a smaller opening to the big angle, that's the tactical work in that moment. And of course, I have to decide as a goalkeeper what time of kind of technique in this decision and uh, to decide. I have to decide what kind of technique should I use here. We should show, I will show you some example for Niklas Landin, very good example from the World Championships, where I can show you four different kinds of uh, techniques he's using from the wing shots. And he has even more. And that is uh, what the good goalkeeper is having. At that I choose Niklas Landin is not because that he has more or better than others. It was very good examples on him. We will see that later on. Um, and then the last one is to act. When you're coming to this situation that you have to act, then it's no, then it's point of no return. It's like when you go with a, on a flight, if you're going over the Atlantic, so it's the, the Pacific, the, the pilots are talking about the point of no return. Because when you're coming to position and you're coming to one thing, now it's not, no, no doubt about it. Now it's near, closer to go to the second, uh, to the where I'm going, and then going back. And this is the same for the goalkeeper. If you have doubts, it's better to take the decision and go for it. When you concentrate on the ball, shooter's body, body language, focus on the arm, focus on the ball, and then act. Because if you're in doubts here, and then that's one thing I also see a lot of times of not so well developed goalkeepers, they have problems to take the right decision or take the decision, take a decision. They want to try to uh, save the ball from a breakthrough or from a wing shot, like it was a shot from long distance, trying to react. No, no possibility. It's no possibility to react on a shot from a, uh, from a breakthrough or an angle from, uh, from six meters. You don't have enough time. You have to have other inputs and you have to make a decision which technique you should use and then act on that. Uh, conforming the body language, the focus on the arm and, uh, and the ball. The problem is if you just focus on the ball, then you don't see the body language. And you don't look at the, the wrist or the the elbow of the shooter, what is or she is pretending to do. So it's not easy to also to say, focus on the ball. No, that's not good. If we say to the goalkeeper that you just should focus on the ball, we are missing the most important part, the information from the shooter, what is going to do. Okay, this was a nice photo of uh, Andreas Palike. I was working with the Swedish national team until it, Egypt. And I finished with him there. And now I have my, my colleague, my good friend, Thomas Svensson, who is preparing them for the Olympics and will continue with their work with the Swedish goalkeepers. I think this is very important also to know that all the best top teams and the best goalkeepers in the world, they need a goalkeeper coach. Uh, they need to have someone to talk with about these strategies, about these possibilities. In my, I've been working with the Swedish national team for uh, after the Olympics 2016, and I've been a long time, no, uh, 12. So I've been a long time with them, and I have a near close relation to them. But uh, today it was uh, impossible. Today it's impossible for me to co combine the both uh, in this uh, way. But I've learned a lot to work with uh, Palika and with other goalkeepers in the uh, Force and Appelgren and, and, and I take that with me into the women's.
and something from the women's I take with me into the men's. But that was a little bit uh, parenthesis, but here's a nice save from uh, Palika in uh, the World Championships in Egypt. Okay, I will uh, show you some examples now about what we are talking about or better to say it, what I'm talking about. Mikler, one uh, Hungarian goalkeeper, high-level goalkeeper, very good performance in the, in the uh, World Championships in Egypt. Uh, the game that uh, Hungary lost against France in the quarterfinals, uh, he had better uh, saving percent than the French team. It's one of the few games where the goalkeeper won the game, but the team lost the game. It was it's very few games that this happens. It happened in this game. That it was uh, quite the big difference between the goalkeepers, saving percentage, but the team was uh, beaten. So we can see here, what I will choose here is, as I wanted to look at different tactics and techniques. We will see two very similar situations and breakthroughs. We see the both of them in one uh, movement here. And then I will take it one more time and we, I will uh, talk a little bit more about them. This is one, uh, two excellent examples that I want to show you from the same goalkeeper, high level goalkeeper that is using different tactics and techniques in the same game. And he's adapting at the situation. So if we see here in the first, uh, I will make this, the first breakthrough between the first and second defender, we can see that Mikler is coming out, finding the position, and he stops a little bit in that. Here he stops. And I'm quite sure about, I don't work with Mikler, I don't never talk to him personally, just, uh, saying hello, but I'm quite sure if you look at the technique the ha that he has observed in observation, he has information about what will happen because this, this kind of save that he's doing with two legs like that, that is not a normal Mikler way of saving. He's prepared. He's, he is, when he's coming in this position, he takes a decision. And in that decision, he takes the decision, I will use this technique. And that is not a common technique. It's a technique that he will use and go up with the both legs because he knows by observing that this player probably will shoot outside my leg here. So if I go up with one leg, he will shoot under me. And if I have other possibility, it will be more complicated for me to save it. So he's making a decision here, a very, very good decision. And then on the second one, we can see here, we can see that the attacker is coming with much more power and, oh, sorry, Maybe I should stop it. That's why it's happening here, something. You can see he's coming with much more power, he's getting much more up, and then he's taking a decision to go harder on him, to go further on and meet him in the air. And, but if you look at the tactics, in the way when the, when the attacker is going through, he is preparing himself by putting the left leg on the, on the, on the, on the floor and leaving the short corning for him to shoot. He's taking care of, with the body of the long corner and he is obliging the shooter to shoot on the short corner. And with excellent technique and then further on with technique, He's saving the ball. We can see that he can use two, at least two different techniques to save breakthroughs. Excellent work of Mikler. Next one, uh, Palika, uh, that I was working with in these uh, championships and I've been working for a long time with him. I'm a very happy man, as I said, to be honest, to work with the best co-keepers in, in the world. And we should look at him at the same way. Uh, the same player, it's against France. Mai is coming into breakthroughs. Look at them. 
the first one, a little bit struggle for the ball afterwards. That's happening when you're playing a semi-final in the World Championships. No bad feelings between the players. Everybody wants to win. We can make a small stop here. Look at the defender. He's putting his hands, but just stopping it. No pushing. No pushing. This, this defender is doing a very good job there. Because it's no seven meters, no two meet, uh, minutes, but he's putting the angle to make it a little bit smaller. And the second one is he's coming once again. My, it's almost a attack. Second attack. If we look at the score and the time, we can see here that the first one is after 15 minutes when Palika is, what we see here, attacking him. And this is something that we've been working a lot together to develop this tactical thought of uh, Andreas Palika. Because a lot of players think that Palika always want to attack. And if you are one kind of goalkeeper that is always doing the same, the, the, the shooters will learn. So he has learned to sometimes I have to attack and sometimes as we will see here, on the second one, he will stand waiting for the player. We go further on, I will stop it here. And he can see now that he's coming a little bit. Oh, stop it. Nice. Sorry about that one. He wants to have it here. Sorry about that one. I hope you're not getting uh, too wishy about this one. But here we can see that Mai is coming once again in the breakthrough. And Alika is not attacking him. He is maybe expecting Palikia to attack him. And he wants him to attack him because he's coming in uh, jank jumping outwards. But Palikia stay. He makes it safe. Different tactics and techniques uh, in, the, in the toolbox to work with. Uh, we will see four different examples from Nandim on wing shots. I will. Uh, I think this is the the last part that I want to show you the different tactics and techniques that you can use or work with your goalkeepers, thinking about the possibilities that your goalkeepers is having. That's another thing that we uh, should be aware of uh, when I'm as a goalkeeper or goalkeeper coach. I always say that you should be looking look at other goalkeepers, but you should try it to find your definition of your, out of yourselves. Uh, London, he has exceptional uh, things that he is using because he is very tall. And that is an advantage for him. For him, it's an advantage. Palek is not that tall, but he's very explosive and he is using his arms. No? Uh, and this, what I want to say, it's not always exactly to work as London, but the important thing here is to see different ways of saving. We can see the first one here, it will be a replay. I will try to not to go too much back and forwards on the video because maybe you'll get a little bit dizzy. We can see the whole thing. Here comes the repetition. We will just look a little bit once again on the repetition here. When I put it here, when it's coming in that situation here. Uh, we can see the Swedish guy, Hampus Vanne, is jumping. We see that uh, Landi is trying to find his position. Ah, sorry about that, they won again. Here it comes. And he's moving with him with a small jump on the right leg, going with him and close the angle. Excellent work from uh, London. One technique that he was using in this game. Another technique that he has been using. Let's look at it. Big angle, super angle.
we can look at that once again here in the end, in the last part, where we can see that he's using a totally different technique. On the first one, we saw that he was going with, he was uh, making uh, Hampus Vanne to shoot on the long post. This time, the position of uh, Landin is more or less uh, trying to invite him to shoot on the, on the short post, on the first post. He's a little bit in that position, he's giving him a little bit more space. The, goal, uh, the shooter is also putting the arm here, thinking, okay, I do that. But in the same time, you see that He's getting up there, and in this moment, this shooter, uh, Daniel Peterson, takes the decision to shoot outside the foot. That should be normally a safe shot, a very safe goal, but the technique from Landim is making him save this one. So this is a very good technique, very expert. It is not what to work with the first one, but this is when you're an expert like London is. Save up for the first one, going down. And in this case, he saved the ball with the leg, but the arm is here to stop the ball also if you're shooting from the outside. Excellent save. Different tactics and techniques from the same goalkeeper. So then we can look at the third one. London. This third technique is similar to the, what we saw in the second one, but the difference is, let's see here, we can see it from the same place. He is inviting him once again to shoot in the short one, but this time he can see that the player is shooting there. And he is not going down with the, the arm because why, what has happened? I never trained with London. That is a work for, uh, for Matthias Andersson in Kiel. And as you can see, he is surely reading the body language of the shooter that is shooting early. So he don't go down with the arm on that side. He stay here and he saves the ball with the left arm and the left leg because he wanted him to shoot in the short form. And there he is waiting for him. What I say, eating him up to make that set. Uh, the last one is from London, a fourth technique, also from a kill game. And we can see here, if we look at once again, excellent positioning. If we start to look, very interesting to see here, the first position of London. This is the first position. He's playing here. And then when the shooter is uh, getting into the wide angle, then he's following him. Small, small steps going with him, putting himself in the position. And this time, he is not using any leg techniques. He has his both legs on the floor and is using an arm technique to make the save. Look at this. Very good example of what I'm talking about. It's uh, putting in everything in the one example. Positioning, observing, orientation, decision, action. Uda loop. Observing, orientation, decision, act. And this is the excellent goalkeeper, high level goalkeeper that shows four different techniques in the same way of shots. But as you can see, seen before, it's not always easy. We, we saw the, the game against the Paris Saint-Germain that uh, London, he didn't have the same luck in, the, in this position because the, the wing player at Paris Saint-Germain uh, had an advantage, even bigger angles, uh, even better physical preparation, even uh, better tech uh, skills. And that's surely the next time that London will play against him, he will be even better prepared and thinking about strategies, how he should stop him. No? Because that is the way that, that we can develop as a goalkeeper against the players. So we take this one as the last one. 
to show. It's not only to be uh, aware about uh, to using your legs, you can also use your arms to make this kind of uh, shapes. Conclusion. Uh, no easy tasks for the goalkeepers and the coaches, but with structural tactical thinking and training, it is possible to develop also this part of the game for the goalkeepers. Uh, we are working on this, like I said, a lot right now. Uh, I'm quite sure um, that this will give us some results in the Olympics and uh, further on for the goalkeepers, because uh, studying uh, what is happening in handball, we can see. I was talking to Celia Solberg, who's playing in Gerd, when I saw some games from the pre-season last year, that we have to start to think about this, the, the, the open angles. We have to prepare for this because it's also um, a psychological factor here in this, no? because uh, if the wings is just coming from uh, very big angles and shooting, finally you will find yourself very small and you will lose your confidence in the situation against uh, shooters from the wings. So it's important to work out some weapons, some strategies, and if the things are not working well, we can go back and work with the strategies. What should be changed? What should be made? Should we change some technique? Should we change the position? But not only go in without in the thoughts, no? We have to be uh, preparing ourselves and, uh, and also thinking really as a goalkeeper coach for me is to see where is the problem? Why don't we save the ball? Is it because of the position? Is it before or because of the we don't make the correction of the position? Is the technique uh, not good enough? Or are we taking uh, a late decision? There's many different factors can, who can make that the goalkeeper don't save the ball. We have the last one that the, the shooter is very good, but I don't like that one. I don't like that one. I say every ball is possible to save, every ball. So uh, it's the, the perfect game should be 0-0. Zero, zero. I, uh, I know this is no ut uh, utopia, but uh, that's for me the perfect game. No? Then my goalkeepers have made a very good game. But uh, we work to uh, try to save every ball, even if it's a big angle and all that. And what do I do in the trainings? The conclusion is for me that uh, when I study this, I make create situations in the training. I create situation where the uh, wing players has to shoot sometimes from small angles, sometimes from big angles. But when I do that, they they don't do. Uh, now we make ten shots from short angles. Now we make take ten shots from big angles. No, they can choose. They can choose. The, sometimes they jump from a short angle. Sometimes they shoot for the big angle. Just for the goalkeeper should not know exactly what will happen. I sometimes cut off possibilities for the shooters that maybe they can just shoot in two corners. Maybe they can just shoot uh, in the long corner up and the short corner down. We should read the body language. Uh, they can just uh, make some decisions. Uh, so that's my work as a goalkeeper coach to find out these kind of exercises for the goalkeepers that is on the level. It should be on the level, a little bit outside what we call the comfort zone, a little bit too complicated, but in the same time, they should feeling a good feeling that, okay, now I feel that I have a, I, 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 I am the person that is uh, knowing what will happen in these situations, no? That is tra a training to be a master. We want to be a master, like we can see London in these games that we saw. Uh, he was a masterclass in this. Then he had also some bad moments. It's not every time you get the right uh, mood and you don't uh, feel the day to save the ball. No? Okay. Thanks for listening. Time for questions. So I left you more or less 20 minutes maximum to make a question because I have to try to catch the team that are going to training now. And so uh, opening up for questions, uh, Courtney, is it you that take care of that or yes, how do we yes. do this? Um, okay, so let's start with this one. I'm going to read their whole explanation that they gave because it's really good. <laughs> uh, this person said, you mentioned the two challenges for goalkeepers. 
more shots from wings with wide angles and from breakthroughs. Uh, last week in another lecture, we also heard that the number of shots from the line player is increasing. So all of this means that there are more six meter shots. So given this development, what, are, what would you say are the main changes to make in the training methods for preparing the goalkeepers? Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what I am talking about here is we have to be aware of this change no? because also the coaches uh, uh, say we know that the, the, the percentage for long distance shots is lower than uh, close by. No? So this is uh, all the methodology has to be all know, but a lot of the methodology of the training should be preparing this kind of situation. I prepare, like I said, sometimes mm, uh, trainings that is mm, find the right position, uh, find the right technique. Uh, sometimes you have to train the goalkeepers to read the game. Uh, like I said in the beginning, um, it's, uh, if you can win time or space, you have to, I've been working with some of my goalkeepers, not now, for a couple of years ago, one of the best goalkeepers in the world, who had a little bit of problem to take, uh, to see the situation. And a lot of times came late into the situation against the, uh, the six meters, the pivot player. No? And that's uh, one of the key points to make a good uh, goalkeeper against the pivot is to know, to read the shooter, the back player, if he's going to short or he's going to pass the pivot. Because if you can read that position that he's going to pass the pivot, a half a second or tenth of a second or two tenths of a second before you do it, then you can take to step forward and find the right position. Once again, we are talking about the position. No? So this is uh, to train a goalkeeper at this level and prepare them for the future is not to prepare a lot of different techniques. Yes, you should have different tools in the toolbox, like we saw with Landin, also in the in the position of the the six meter line. But the most important maybe is to, to read this uh, strategical work. How can I see that the ball is coming to the pivot uh, or to the wing players to be in time and to be aware of my position and not go, like I said, also in the one moment here to just to try to save the ball, to go for the ball. Save, always you should try to save the ball. Uh, but if we are hunting the ball, it's not, uh, it's not good enough for the shots uh, close by. We, we can't be playing reacting. We have to act before reacting. I don't know if this was uh, good enough to answer, but that's my way of thinking. I think that was perfect. Um, Thank you. We have a few questions about physical characteristics of the goalkeepers. Um, uh, some people just ask, what are the main physical characteristics to look for when deciding who should be a goalkeeper? Uh, is How important is height? If a goalkeeper is short, what can we do? What are the uh, tools to develop this goalkeeper? These are the main two questions. Yeah, uh, I think this is a, another, <laughs> another th big thing to talk about in a, in a in, uh, about the, 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 the choosing the right goalkeepers or working with the right goalkeepers. I say the most important for uh, to choose the goalkeeper is to find a goalkeeper that got this mental part. Uh, the physical part uh, is not the number one thing. That's one of the first things that we choose bad, the goalkeepers. We working sometimes with goalkeeper that is not having this kind of mentality to see, to read the game as a goalkeeper, to read the body language of the shooter where the ball is coming. We are working sometimes too much to find the perfect physical. Uh, but there are, like I said, there is no one. Look, look at, the, for example, in the men's world, Andreas Palika, Niklas Landin, uh, Mikael Appelgren. We have a lot of goalkeepers with different uh, styles, with different uh, heights, with different uh, physical preparations, and they are all excellent goalkeepers. They have something that is not the, the, the physical, the physical, what they are born with, the natural way. But there are something in common except the mental part. It's what I say, we have to look for the motricity, the coordination and the flexibility. 
to be a good goalkeeper, yes, you need physical preparation, technical preparation, and tactical preparation. But the physical preparation is not only to choose. Someone is saying, okay, it's better with uh, two meters goalkeepers. Maybe, if they know to play like that. Uh, Palika is not two meters. In the women's world, we have goalkeepers like uh, Silvia Navarro in Spain, who is an excellent goalkeeper. We have Eckerle in Germany, excellent goalkeepers. They have other things that is not uh, the wing and they have to, to, uh, too much height and uh, the possibility to reach the ball easily. But they have explosivity, they have flexibility, they have excellent physical preparations. And that's what you have to, 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 to work with. When you have this uh, talent, and the talent for a goalkeeper is for me to first of all, to, uh, to be in the right position, not the physical way, if it's two meter or 180. That's the way I have to work with him later on. But if you should work about, uh, think about uh, what should we choose? Motricity, coordination, and uh, flexibility. If you're working and talking about that in the young goalkeepers, and like I said, the mental part. If they are able to read what is going to happen, then we can work with a goalkeeper that could be excellent goalkeeper in the future. It doesn't matter if it's 170 or two meters. Okay, uh, we have a few questions about uh, young goalkeepers. Yep. Somebody asked for uh, this person works with children with a children's team so is under 10 do you start to choose one player to be a goalkeeper already and if you do what kind of no okay <laughs> no i don't do that uh, I, I my way of working or my way of talking with i don't work so much personally but i work in the norwegian federation with the education of goalkeeper coaches and what future goalkeeper trainers and what we're talking about at uh, when you are under 12, 12 years old, it's most important is to start with this physical preparation. What I'm talking about, the flexibility, motricity, coordination. That's why uh, the easiest way to learn when you are young and when you're getting up to 14, 15 years old, it's more complicated for the goalkeepers, especially the boys. To, to earn flexibility. If we start with that in the younger ages, it's good. We also start a little bit with the, trying to learn the positioning. Uh, where should I be? The body, your own positioning. We have a lot of goalkeepers that is uh, young, 10 years, 11 years old, that is playing with the position, uh, the body position of their own body, like they were uh, acting like uh, London, who's two meters tall and receiving shots that is 130 kilometers per hour. But if you're standing in a goal with 10 years or 11 years old, it's, the ball is not coming uh, to you in that speed. So that's, we have to adapt the, the goalkeeper or the goalkeeper training to the situation where they are going. And if we tell the goalkeeper what will happen too much when they are younger ages, they will never learn by themselves uh, we can ask them, uh, can you see a little bit from, from where he's shooting, where the ball is coming? Because in these ages, we are more working, like I said before, reacting. They are reacting on the ball. And if we can change that little bit of reacting and go into the, the body language, can you see where, they, where he's going to shoot? Can you see, can you think where he's coming when he's running that uh, direction? But we don't, I don't want to start with that from uh, 12, 13 years old. I think it's better. Uh, to be a handball player, and if you like to be in a goal, be in the goal, yes. But sometimes you should also be a field player to, to feel the both situations. No? So I, to start to work with goalkeepers as a goalkeeper training from 13 years old, more or less. Okay. Um, somebody asked about reading of the body language. Um, how important is this for a, a goalkeeper today? It's very important. Uh, it's very important to read a body language. It's this where you got the, the, the signals from the shooters, what will going to happen. Like I said, if you just concentrate on the ball, you don't have enough enough uh, information where the ball will end in the goal. So it's very important to read a body language, uh, to look at, it's important, it's, it's almost impossible to say what you should look at. 
because that's also a learning process. No, some goalkeepers look at the shoulders, some goalkeepers look at the hips, other goalkeepers look at the, the elbow. Uh, so that's it's a learning process to see, but it's very important to work with the body language. And uh, we have exercises that the goalkeeper should try to see where the ball, ball is uh, shooting or where the ball is coming in the goal. Uh, um, call it in one way, free shooting, but the shooter has to decide before where the ball is going to go and to go. So the goalkeeper should try to read, okay, when the ball is coming up to the left, uh, the left shoulder is coming forward a little bit or the right shoulder is coming forward a little bit. Try to read the body language to know where the ball is coming. It's very important. Um, just in relation to that, I will mention that uh, Matt's talked about this a lot in his lecture last year in the first IHF Live Online Symposium. Uh, you can find that uh, in the IHF Education Center or on our Facebook page. We have a playlist. It's called That lecture was called Go Goalkeeper Coach Education Basic Concepts in a Different Way. So it's very worth checking that out, everybody. Um, Okay, we have a little bit of a more of a technical question. Somebody asked about the best positions for the arms. High, middle, low. Different goalkeepers do seem to do this a bit differently. So also why do they do that? Yeah, I like that question. Um, I like that question because it, that's just one big thing for me. Uh, my point of view when I work with my goalkeepers, especially with the young ones, is what I call, uh, call the boxing position. If uh, the boxer, uh, old-fashioned boxers like Muhammad Ali and all this, uh, there, when they put your arms more or less and the, the level of your eyes, I should. That's for me the ground position. And that's why I say a lot of times I see young goalkeepers standing with the hands far over the head and so on. And that's also almost or only complicating the life for the goalkeeper to move around, to be, uh, to move from one side to another side and uh, with the body control, because we, it's not easy uh, to do that. Uh, but when you're getting better and better, you're getting High, uh, higher up in the categories. And I can understand if you look at uh, goalkeepers that look at, the, let's say, London. London is standing with his arms very high, but London is two meters high. And he don't have to have uh, any power, even if he has it, to reach to the corner, uh, up corner. So if he, if the ball is coming up in the, in the, in, in the left uh, up, he can just with a small step go there with the with the with the arm, so he can easily reach that ball. But if you're 170 and you're standing with a, your uh, arms over your head and you try to do the same, you are losing a lot of power, a lot of force because you can't use your arms and the movements to reach to that ball. Uh, what you win in that situation, what you think you're winning, that you're putting the arms over your head and so on. That is only for me, in my opinion, for high level goalkeepers to play in the high level leagues where the shoots is, the shot is coming very hard and with the speed that you don't have enough time. But when you're getting nowhere, especially with the young ones, it's better to take them down to find the comfort as a goalkeeper to move around in the goal. That's why I always say to my goalkeeper coaches and the trainers of younger goalkeepers, Try to start from the boxing position. And from the boxing position, you'll go further around because in the boxing position, you have your knees, a little bit bending your knees, you have your hips, you have your body control, you can feel it, and then you go for the ball. And when you're getting older and older and you're getting into newer categories, maybe you should have to change something in that way, but not from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, somebody asked how you can work on improving the reaction ability of the goalkeeper. Yeah. Uh, do we really need it? That's my question. Do we really need it? Uh, like I said, uh, the reaction is, uh, parameters for the reaction is that I have information from the body language that I have information from observing, uh, from orient. So I can uh, take away a lot of things because if I put 
uh, no, what we can call it uh, reaction training in the classical way that you put lamps and so on. Uh, that's not helping me as a goalkeeper. It's, uh, you can train um, the reaction time that the, the, this is complicated because you can train the, 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 the reaction time from the, when you see it, the perception in the brain, and then you have to make a movement with your arm. Yes, you can train that, but that part is so small. A lot of hours you have to put in to be even a little bit quicker. It could be much better to train these hours with the way of what I'm talking about, body language, uh, reading, positioning, what is happening. So, uh, of course, we can train this also, but I think it's more important to train motricity, coordination, and this kind. Otherwise, we, I have exercises where I hide the shooters behind uh, air bodies or behind uh, the mats or something like that when you can't see the shooter and suddenly the shooter coming up and shooting a quick shot. That's a, the best way for me. Because if you put some external uh, things that lamps that should be red or green or white or something like that, that's not natural. Uh, that's not natural. Uh, we are getting better on what we are training. So if I want a player that should shoot on me, I have to play train with players that are shooting on me. And I can make that more or less complicated for the goalkeeper. So if I want to train reaction training with my goalkeepers, I put shooters, uh, hidden shooters, and suddenly they come up and make a quick shot. So I have to quickly read the ball language of where the ball is coming. Okay, we'll just do one more very quick one before we go. Uh, somebody asked, what about if players are interested in being goalkeepers, but they're afraid, um, especially with breakthrough shots, are there mm -hmm. drills or mental practice that can be used to overcome that? Yeah, this is a problem sometimes we have with young goalkeepers, no? that they are not physically developed yet to, to reach the ball. Uh, and uh, because this is something that you get used to uh, when you start in younger ages, you, you be getting used to living with the ball is coming, they hit you a little bit and they, uh, you get this feeling. Uh, you can't start to be a goalkeeper in the high ages, no? You have to be living with it and go into it to, to get away of this um, situation that is not comfortable, no? But I have one, uh, one example that I'm also using with my uh, high-level goalkeepers. Uh, excellent thing, street handballs. A street handball is a uh, way of handball that is uh, soft, uh, but it's still manageable, uh, manageable. You can uh, pass the ball. You cannot. You can't dribble it. But you can shoot on the goalkeeper one one hundred percent because if the ball is hitting the goalkeeper, he's not hurt. He's not hurt, or she's not hurt. If the ball is getting into the head, okay, you get a little bit red, but you are not hurt. If you get into the body, you are not hurt. And therefrom, you can work with the technique. So. If you have goalkeepers that are a little bit afraid uh, about uh, is not the, the development of the body is not ready to, uh, to face these situations, I can recommend that you start to work with street handballs. Okay, thank you very much. And we will wrap up there, everybody. As we mentioned, Mats is hard at work in preparation for the Olympic Games with the Norway women's team. So I know he has to get back to that. So we wish you the very best of luck in Tokyo, Mats. We look forward to seeing your goalkeepers in action. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much to everybody that have been here listening to me. And uh, I hope that everybody has a, one possibility to, uh, to pitch, uh, take one thing up and use in the future. And that will be a good development for the handball in the future. Thank you. So everybody, we are back for the next lecture, the second to last lecture in the second IHF Live Online Symposium on Thursday, 8th of July at 2 p.m. Central European Summertime. And that is with Thierry Anti, head coach of Pau Campbell, first division in France. You also might remember him as the former head coach of HBC Nantes, who were in the Champions League final in 2018. And he is also the president of the European Professional Coaches Association. His topic is what handball do we expect for the future? So we will see you next Thursday. Thank you, Mats. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you to all our team behind the scenes. Goodbye everyone.